Hi, I'm Chef Mark Strauss. Today I'm going to teach you how to make fresh New York City bagels right in your own kitchen. Okay, let's get started. To start to make bagels, you need a souring agent. Fermentation adds flavor, and the sour in English is called a sponge, and in French it's called a pouliche. We have 272 grams of high gluten flour, and I'm going to take 272 grams of the water and mix it together. And I'm going to take a quarter teaspoon of yeast out of the one teaspoon in the recipe. And with my hand, I'm going to slowly mix it until it's together. I think the pre-ferment is ready. This has been sitting for about eight hours and it's actually ripe. It has a nice sour smell. You see all of the bubbles, so the yeast is activated, it's nice and alive. How would it look if it's too sour? This is what a pouliche looks like when it's overripe. It's risen and fallen, similar to a souffle. So we start by adding the pouliche to the bowl. Here is the remaining water, uh, which is 275 grams. And we are going to put three quarters of a teaspoon of yeast in. Get it into the water. Get it nice and mixed up a little bit. We have weighed out the rest of the high gluten flour, which is 655 grams. Now we're going to add the six grams of didactic malt, and now the 17 grams of salt, which we put near the flour and away from the yeast. We started off on number one just to mix the ingredients together. We're ready to start the second speed. The first thing I do is I set my timer for five minutes because I want to make sure that I don't over knead the dough. And I just want to taste it to make sure it has the right amount of salt. Okay, we're done. You see, it's nice and firm. It's elastic, it's smooth, and now we're going to transfer it to the container where we're going to let it ferment. I let it ferment outside for two hours and then I let it stay another four hours in the refrigerator. I cover it with plastic film and I put it in a very cool part of the kitchen. Now we're ready to start to really make bagels. Most bagels today are made by machine. A true bagel is really rolled by hand. We cut the bagel dough and we make a nice, even, long piece. Very simple. We start by rolling it nice and even. Turn it, rip it, and then apply pressure you use the balls of your hand to put pressure down to seal the dough. There we go. It's starting to look like a bagel. Every bagel didn't look alike. Some were a little bit bigger, some had, were a little smaller, some had a bigger hole, some had a smaller hole. You know, and I think that that's what's really nice about making old-fashioned bagels. And now we have a full tray of bagels. These bagels need to proof a little bit longer, probably about a half an hour. We don't want to overproof them. I use a garbage bag because at home we don't have proof boxes. 
So we have ice water bath for when the bagels are boiled and finished. And I do my own version of an everything bagel, which is poppy seeds, sesame seeds, and a little bit of coarse sea salt. If you want a true New York bagel, it has to have a little bit of salt. We're ready to boil the bagels. We take a little bit of Ubex malt syrup and we add it to the water, which will give the bagel its final color. Let's look at the bagels. We keep them a little covered because we don't want the crust to form. Now the bagel is delicate. You have to be really careful how we take it and we put it in the water. If it doesn't float, it's not going to be a good bagel. We remove the bagel one by one using the spider and we put it into the ice bath. At home, you need a pizza stone with your oven at 475 degrees that's been preheated for at least an hour and a half. I'm taking a traditional bagel board, which is a piece of wood, and they're covered with burlap. And this is how the bagel was traditionally baked and started in the oven. And the reason why we soak them in water is so they don't go on fire and they last longer. And we're going to start to get ready to decorate our bagels. We're still very delicate with them. We put them in, and what we do is we put them face down on the bagel board. And we're going to bake them face down for a couple of minutes, which will ultimately dry out all of the moisture as well as not burn the seeds. Now it's time to turn the bagels. This is where you really have to be careful. You need to use at home an oven mitt. In a restaurant we just use kitchen towels. Most chefs hands are already oven mitts. And then we close it. Yeah, I think the bagels are ready. And what you want to do is put them on a cooling rack because you want them cool from both above and below. Bagels need color. We don't eat raw dough. Most bagels today are raw, puffy, full of a lot of air, tons of yeast, cheap flour, and not made the way they were traditionally when I was a kid many, many moons ago. I'm going to cut the bagel. And you see that it crumbs. We have a nice crumb. Look at that. Beautiful holes. All right. It's all about the holes. And we're going to teach you how to make a schmear. Very simple. You can't call it a schmear. you got to call it a schmear. Right like that. And you just schmear it on. Close it, and there we go. Really, the most fun about making a bagel is at the end you get to eat it. Mm, that's a bagel. Happy bagel making.